Welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream for today, the 1st of December 2020. We have a debut presentation from what could be our next 10 bagger stock, 10 bagger or more, uh, which means 10 bagger for those who don't know the term, it means a stock that is up 10x, that's 1000%. Company is ESE Entertainment. ESE on the TSX Venture and ENTEF over the counter. Uh, the CEO we have here is Conrad Vasella. Conrad, am I pronouncing the name correctly? I like it, man. It's good. Vasella, okay. Conrad, welcome. Thanks, Jack, man. It's a pleasure to be on, and we're really fired up over here to be on. Hey, well, the stock is moving. You got some some incredible volume since uh, you, you know we announced the, the presentation. So there's a lot of investors who are you're obviously very excited about what you're doing, the potential and everything. Um, so I think what we're going to do is uh, now we're going to have you, you're going to do a, a presentation. We're going to show some demos, some video, and then we'll, we'll, I'll jump back on and we'll, we'll go to Q and a. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to just give a nice overview of ESC entertainment uh, as a whole, uh, really dive into some details and show you some demos and then dive into some Q and a and just, fired up with the viewers and uh you know just start that process okay perfect yeah twitch that was the one yeah I, I, oh yeah, i see the comments okay okay discord okay we got montana here uh all right so let's uh let's get uh this set up here okay uh so brandon uh take it away and i will see you in uh in a few minutes great all right guys Pleasure to be on. So our company is ESE Entertainment Inc. Recently listed in August on the TSX Venture symbol ESE and on the OTC symbol ENTEF. So the big question, what are esports? To simplify, esports is competitive sport using video games. And there's no better way to show you this than the 2019 Fortnite World Championships. So let's just watch this quick clip here. Look at the buzz here, guys. Pack Stadium, three million US dollars on the line. This is what esports is all about. And this is why it surpassed over a billion in 2019 in revenues. And more exciting than that, 25% year over year growth. As I mentioned, Kyle won 3 million US that day. So Europe, one of the largest markets in the world, over 580 million online population, 32 plus million esports enthusiasts, and it's growing fast and ESE is right in the thick of it. So ESE is a world-class esports infrastructure company. Our core business lines fall under two categories, technology and our gaming franchise. As it pertains to technology, we have a digital tournament software, an e-commerce software, and we also have a simulation racing and 3D track scanning capabilities. Our gaming franchise, we have exclusive digital media rights. We have a professional esports team called Kick, and we manage and own our own tournaments and leagues. Some highlights. Europe is wide open for consolidation, and we have first mover advantage. We have a diversified business model scaled through technology in our gaming franchise. This is an exceptional market opportunity as gaming is a global mega trend and esports is leading the way. And our management team is simply world class. And I think our partners and sponsors speak to that. And let's dive into what our team has actually done. So this is an event we put on for Porsche. And this is a sim racing event that was on live TV throughout Europe on 11 sports TV channel. And the exciting part, guys, is sim racing is a huge upside. We have, after performing this event with Porsche, we've had unbelievable response from other very large automotive companies, most notably Kia and Mercedes Benz, and we're working on several others. So this just shows you the future of sim racing and how big this could be. I mean, it's really exciting. 
So let's jump into the opportunity. So there's no dominant infrastructure company powering esports. There's fragmented cha channels as it pertains to uh, esports companies. That's why they're really struggling to generate revenue. Lack of standardization, lack of permanent digital and physical infrastructure for supporting events. And it's difficult to manage global broadcasting and advertising channels. So what's the solution? ESE is the solution, a world-class infrastructure company that has the software for events and tournaments, that has physical infrastructure and broadcasting capabilities. We have existing global distribution for esports related content, and we have tier one advertising and sponsorship partners in place, and our growing gaming franchise, Kick, is primed for growth. So our company assets, this is how we make money. So if you break it into technology and a gaming franchise, our digital tournament software allows us to, lic to license and then we create licensing revenue. Our e-commerce platform, we sell products and we have affiliate revenues. Our simulation racing, we provide 3D track scanning and we implement our events into the game Assetto Corsa. Our gaming franchise, we have exclusive digital media rights so we have the sale of digital media rights for sporting events, esports events. Our professional esports team, we're constantly in, in uh, tournaments and there's winnings and sponsorships now that generates revenue for kick. And our wholly owned and managed leagues, we have setup fees and entry fees for those tournaments. And the games we're involved in, Apex Legends, Rocky League, League of Legends, FIFA, and Assetto Corsa, to name a few. Technology, distribution, and our customers. This is where we get into the big stuff, guys. So our technology partner, Meta. So Meta is a proprietary technology that runs and operates our digital esports and gaming events. They have over a million plus impressions a month, 30,000 plus competitive gamer profiles, over 25 countries and in 18 games. Something to note, they were chosen as the platform for Razer uh, to host the 2019 Southeast Asia Games. And our deal with Meta is an exclusivity uh, for Europe and the company has a 50-50 split on profits from that partnership. Distribution, Esports TV, also known as ESTV. ESC is helping them expand into Europe with these monsters, Amazon Fire, Samsung TV, Sling, Watch Revisio, Roku TV. So a huge opportunity for distribution there. Another one of our partners, uh, Polsat, a multi-billion dollar media conglomerate based in Europe. We have exclusive licenses with Riot Games and Polsat to participate in a tournament within League of Legends, in the game League of Legends. And this tournament has over 24 million views annually. So if you look at the photo here, guys, this is actually a photo of the studio, the Polsat studio. It's world-class, it's over 30 million, year, 30 million euro uh, they invested into that studio. So another key customer, Porsche. I mean, it speaks for itself. They trusted us with their esports and gaming activations. And I think that just kind of says it all. Orlin, another multi-billion dollar company we're partnered with. It's a large oil and gas company based in Europe. And ESE has a deal to manage and run certain gaming and esports events on behalf of Orlin. The executive team, there I am. I'm the founder and CEO, uh, founded a global real estate and private equity company. I played professional sports uh, football for over five years. And I've been involved in gaming and esports for over 10 working with the biggest guys in the industry, EA Sports, Flutter Entertainment, Take-Two Interactive, all the big guys. Rob Kang's our CFO. He's a former director of listings for the TSX Venture Exchange, and he has over 20 plus years and experience in capital markets. JJ, the director of EO Operations, over 20 years experience in esports and sports. This guy's done it all on a global scale. He does, he's, execute on world-class events like the World Track, Track Cycling Championships to note. Michael Mango, Director of Marketing, he's just an esports and gaming nerd and he loves it. 
He's a co-founder of the first sociological study on esports and gaming in Poland, and he's been a part of some of the best teams in the world. Pedro Fernandez, he's the director of our Kick franchise. He's a living legend uh, in the space. He's led the Kick team to over 800 awards and 500 tournament wins. Our current focus, revenue. Aggressively focus on top line sales and margin expansion, our mergers and acquisitions, execute only on accretive acquisitions, expanding our global distribution, continue to sign those large scale deals for distributions in the US and Asia, and increase the value of our gaming franchise, Kick. Continue to push the Kick brand globally and make it the next big brand. Comparables, this is exciting, guys. Follow along. You have score at the bottom, 670 million market cap. Esports Entertainment Group, 71 million market cap. Engine Media, 70 million market cap. EGLX, Enthusiast Gaming, 310 million market cap. We are at 18.9 million market cap as of yesterday's closing price. So this shows you the tremendous opportunity and ground floor opportunity. We're primed for growth. Our capital structure overview. Once again, this is based on yesterday's closing price. We closed at 49 cents, market cap of 18.9 million. Insider holdings of over 50% and very tightly held. Basic shares out 38.6 million. I really wanna note that this is a tight structure and primed for growth. That kind of wraps it up for me, Jack. Uh, really excited to jump into the Q&A and give the viewers some more insight. Okay, uh, let's get this on the screen. We've got some questions coming in. I got a few questions for you first, and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get to the 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 audience questions. I know we're gonna have a lot of questions. So so Conrad, so so the first thing is, uh, well, you know, you're actually I think you're the first CEO we've had on uh, who's been wearing a suit and tie. Uh, well, actually, no. There's, there's, there's since since uh, your predecessor was a company that went from very similar stock price from fifty cents to ten dollars and one cent. That was Cytodyne. So it took Cytodyne about uh, uh, eleven months to get there. And that guy, that was uh, not there. Not there would always uh, show up in a suit and tie. So this is uh, maybe maybe lightning will strike twice, or or we just continue to deliver and we get there. Absolutely. So, so he kind of right. So he's. Can you kind of tell the audience a little bit more about about your background? Like, you know, you you played foot. I don't know. You played football. You 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 were in, in real estate. Like, what what have you what have you been doing? Yeah. So I'm a former professional athlete. I played over five years in the Canadian Football League, uh, and that was one of my dreams growing up. You know, my passion. I was able to get there. Uh, and very proud to be able to play at the highest level in the world in football. Uh, as it pertains to business, I've always been an entrepreneur since I could remember, since I was a little kid. I uh, always had a vision for a billion dollar company. And I think this is the one that's going to be the next billion dollar company. Uh, but I've been very successful. I was able to build a global real estate holding company uh, with over 10 plus million in assets. Uh, and I've invested in some gaming and esports deals in the past and i've built those to multi-million dollar revenue companies as well uh, but now it's just 100 percent focus on esc i'm absolutely obsessed uh, anyone who knows me will tell you this is just the beginning okay yeah we, have, we actually we, have, we got some 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 uh, people in the audience uh they have been uh the we got some guys saying they know you they've they're saying you're you're an impressive guy we got hang on a second what do we have here we have Rahul, Rahul, do you know this guy? Rahul, we got some, we got a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of positive, a lot oh, of yeah. positive, a lot of positive comments here, which is always important. Look, I think, I think with they're all, not, they're, and they're not hiding. They're not hiding. They're not, hiding. They're not, they're not, proud they're, not to yeah. say. they're not getting paid, right? These are not paid. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, absolutely so we, not. yeah, because I think what's interesting is, uh, you know, in the micro cap space, I always find that the, the, it's the CEO of the company that, that it, it's it's really important because that is, you know, ultimately, I think investors, it's important to have uh, a CEO that knows how to, you know, uh, raise opportunities, seize those opportunities, pivot when things 
you know, uh, you know, problems pop up, which they always do in any type of business. And we've had a lot of our clients, uh, you know, companies, you know, they things happen yet COVID yet this yet that and and the ones that uh, were were successful were the the guys who were able to, to pivot. So that's that's you know an absolutely critical. Um, so I want to ask you a couple things. First of all, you know, just so you know. Uh, to get to right to the right to get to the bottom line, you know our audience they're looking for you know stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside. So they want to know how ESC can go from you know 50 cents today to let's say five dollars plus. Now normally we would say over the next you know 18 months, 24 months, but you know our audience has been very spoiled because we've had a bunch of you know 10 baggers, 20 baggers in the last few months. So now. You know they want it now. They want that. They want that ten bagger right now. You know, and, and since you're in esports, you know everybody, you know all the millennials. They want instant gratification. So, what's the path? What's the path for ESC to be a, a five dollar stock? Well, let's make it clear right off the bat. We have a clear vision, both internally and corporately, that we want to be a billion dollar company, and that's that's the we're laser focused on that. That's step number one. Number two, consolidation. Our acquisition pipeline is primed and ready. And I think that's going to be the play. We're going to go out and execute only on accretive acquisitions. We're going to bring on partners that generate revenue and have profitability. And we're going to continue to grow and layer our business. And three, we're going to build the biggest esports infrastructure company in the world. Okay. Uh, in terms now. In terms of the M and A, what what kind of opportunities are you looking at? Like, what kind of companies? Or what's what's you know what kind of targets? What's the criteria you have for for M and A? As I mentioned, the number one criteria: if you're not profitable, if you're not an accretive business, uh, and you don't have tier one partners, multi billion dollar partners, we're just not interested. But we're not in, going to take the journey of burning capital and waiting. Uh, we want it now. We want to move fast. And we bring huge upside from our side. So we want synergies. So it's like a layer cake. We execute on the acquisition and we build and grow together. And then we go and get the next guy and we continue to consolidate. And we have a whole roadmap planned uh, for 2021 and even into 2022. And you're going to see it. I mean, look at the partners we have now. We deliver and execute time and time again. We have quarterly growth with revenue. We generate revenue every month. We have reoccurring clients. This is the beginning, but I mean, it's all about working with people that have the same passion, that have accretive businesses, that have the same mindset. And we're laser focused on building a billion dollar company. Okay. So I think, I think the key kind of takeaway is I know you, you're not you're not giving us too much information about the types of companies that, that you're going to be buying, but the key, the one common denominator they must have is they have to be profitable and they have to bring, uh, you know, so, so, you know, basically they have to they have to be like best of breed companies and and profitable. Hundred percent. I want to work with the best. You're not going to get. You're not going to become the best if you're uh, if you're picking up, you know mid-sized companies or companies that are underperforming. I don't want to have anything to do with that. We want to just work with the best and build, build, build. And, you know, I can't get into too many details, but just stay tuned. It's coming. Okay. Uh, Conrad, I got to say the, 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 the two things I like so far is that, you know, you're, you, you know, this reminds me of, of another company we had where the CEO would always say, stay tuned. And he did say that his goal was to build a billion dollar company. That stock went from, 50 cents to ten dollars also because Canadian, yeah. Canadian, Canadian us seven dollars so so well, we'll that company so we're, we're already we have a lot of good things happening here so i think i think jack at the, at the end of the day when you know you're going to deliver and you have things in the pipeline you're not scared and we're not scared we have things in the pipeline and you're going to see it. it's going to be consistent news releases consistent deliveries and we're just excited, man. I hope all the viewers are excited because I'm fired up, man. We're we're going for it here. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, let's jump to some audience questions here. Uh, Phenom is saying, "Would you be able to? You can see Conrad. You can see the questions on the screen, right? 
Yep. Okay, so if you're not saying, uh, would you be able to break down the revenue percentage between the different streams? What brings in the most dough? Yeah, I think it's a pretty even breakdown at the moment. Uh, so there's currently, as it stands right now, uh, digital media rights, advertising, and sponsorships uh, lead the charge. Uh, and I would say that's about 30% of the revenue. Uh, then the rest is split on our e-commerce platform, our tournament digital uh, platform. Uh, and then our sim racing has really had a big uptake. Um, so I would say it's about an even split with those those three. Okay. The um, You know, what's what's interesting is you know, you're talking about the digital media rights, the broadcasting, all this stuff. You know, right now, I mean, can you kind of maybe give our audience uh, – you know some color because you're you're in the business i mean i'm i'm yeah. just read about these things like you know i see articles of forbes you know they're talking about you know there's like kids making i mean like you know 18 year old kids making five million dollars you know playing yeah sports. it's wild uh, there's guys on what's that channel is it twitch or something people are getting paid money people are paying to watch yeah. them play. They're, they're tipping they're tipping them while they're playing yeah. they're generating revenues they're actually placing ads now within twitch and that's what we're getting at so just to kind of outline it to really simplify it i always use traditional sports uh, as a parallel because it's easy to understand you know imagine the opportunity uh if i you told me today we could all go get the nfl network exclusive rights to broadcast all the nfl games we would be all, none of us would be on the screen right now because we'd be running down the street to go buy them if they're available. That's the opportunity. So these gaming publishers have exclusive digital media rights for specific regions and countries throughout the world. And when I say we have exclusive digital media rights, for example, in the game Rocky League, we had exclusivity with Epic Games for the game Rocky League in Poland. So if you wanted to create a large scale tournament, or broadcast the game Rocky League, you would actually have to go through us because we held those exclusive digital media rights. And we're pursuing more digital media rights uh, throughout Europe and in different countries and regions. Okay, so I mean, the, the business, the eSports, I mean, it's real, it's pure, it's, again, the name, you know, the name of the company is ESE Entertainment. I mean, really, you're in the entertainment business. Yep. People are paying, they're, you know, they're paying money to yep. to watch eSports, essentially, right? So, so it's a crazy, it's, 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 it's really an incredible phenomenon. Uh, so essentially, you're you're getting to the broadcasting. That there is uh, what's happening. There's a couple of guys in pro. There's a bunch of guys in pro sports who own teams, who have invested in the space. Uh, in the east, I think they own esports teams, or they're doing like what? Can you talk about that a little bit just to give people some background? Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because even when I played pro sports, you know, it seemed like a long time ago. But even then, we were all playing games. You know, in the off season, we'd be playing Madden and all these different video games. But now the younger generation, all the pros, you know, they're coming out of college at call it 19 to 23 years old. They're all gamers. It's just advanced. And now they're live streaming. So you have superstars like Juju Schuster Smith from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated with a gaming headset on. Like if that doesn't tell you something, I mean, it's a mega trend. And we've even brought on professional athletes as ambassadors. Most notably, we signed Evander Kane. He's an NHL superstar uh, and he's an avid gamer as well. And we look to actually add on some more professional athletes. And one thing to note, in Europe, we actually hosted a huge event with FC Barcelona. So we brought FC Barcelona, their esports division, to Poland. Uh, and if you guys aren't familiar with FC Barcelona, you know, that's arguably the biggest sports brand in the world. So that's those are the type of groups we work with. Or, yeah, I guess the football, they call, in Europe they call it football, but basically okay. it's soccer, the biggest soccer team. Biggest soccer team. I mean, that brand speaks for itself, and we did a large scale event with them uh, in Europe last okay. year. So, so what did you do? You brought them. You brought them to to Poland, and, and for what kind of what was the event? What did, what did you guys do? So that was for the game Rocket League, and we hosted a tournament between ESE and the FC Barcelona uh, team, and that's something you guys could just jump on Google and have a look. Uh, we were actually posted on their main page, their FC Barcelona 
uh, football club page and we got a lot of press from that and uh, something you guys could dive into on your own time. Okay, so that is uh, so that's pretty interesting. Okay, so so the big money. Okay, so the, there's uh, so there's there's huge money in like broadcast rights and sports, all this other stuff, uh, and that but, is yeah, and that's what you're you're going to be doing with with esports on, on different platforms, basically. Exactly, and at that's the end of the day, that's just one of your kind of verticals. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we're going to build that world class infrastructure company so when the groups like fc barcelona or hopefully the dallas cowboys groups like this want to get into this space they're going to be reaching out to ese entertainment to fulfill that back-end infrastructure for them because they're just they don't know the steps that they need to take to enter into the market and it okay. and it's inevitable right yeah all the pro sports teams are diving into this like you wouldn't believe because they're losing viewership to gen z Right, so they need to dive into this space now. Yeah, I especially think, with COVID, there is no games. So I mean, you got no fans, anyways. So yeah, you know, I, I I've talked about this because we've had I, we had a couple of people in the in the space on. We've had uh, you know the guy who runs the ETF, uh, the ETF. So there's a, the the esports ETF. We've had uh, you know fans unite, and and you know the, the the one of the things that we always talk about is the fact that. Kind of the the there's a really a, a shift happening a generational shift where the 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 new the 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 coming generation of millennials and after that is they want stuff which they could which they could participate in which is yeah. they get involved in so they don't want to just watch you know people play and video games anybody can more or less play so it's you know not everybody can play professional football right but exactly. you know, anybody can play, you know, uh, esports, right? So it's something they can relate to. It's it's a much, it's a much wider market, and, and it's global. It's all global. It's 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 global. It's online. It's COVID proof. It's, COVID -proof. I mean, you you got to be in the space. I mean, do your research, do your due diligence. But this is a massive mega trend, and you got to be involved. And when you see these big groups shifting into it, I mean, it's just a tremendous opportunity. Yeah, I think the I think the guy from the Dallas uh, I think there's who who's I'm thinking the Dallas Cowboys. There's a couple of guys who've gotten into esports in a big way. Also, the guy from uh, what is it the uh, the Patriots, New England Patriots. I think he, they own an esports. There, I mean, there, there's tons of uh, examples. I'll use another example. This one's great. So for the game NBA 2K, uh, so when COVID hit, the Phoenix Suns decided to host a tournament, an online NBA tournament. And ironically, on their live Twitch feed, they actually surpassed viewership that they would have at a traditional game. So they had a bigger, a bigger live following watching the guys online playing NBA 2K, the game, than they did at a live event watching the actual team. So wow. it is, I mean, it's the proof's in the pudding. The, the, the stats are out, the analytics are out, follow the trend. You know, you highlighted it earlier. Amazon didn't buy Twitch for fun for 900 million when everyone thought they were crazy. Well, guess what? Like you always say, that's a that's 10x or, or who knows how much that's worth now, right? It's follow the trends. Facebook created their own Facebook gaming channel. YouTube has their own YouTube gaming channel. You know, they aren't making these decisions on the fly. This is here to stay and it's just the beginning. Let's let's go to uh the next audience question here. Uh Alink, Alink, I think it is the, is the name. Uh, can you share with us the roadmap for 2021? Great question, Conrad. What's uh what's kind of in the pipeline in terms of what can we see happening in terms of Forget about even 2021. Let's just say the next couple of months. What's in the in the in the news pipeline? What kind of news flow can we expect? Aggressive approach to our MA pipeline. Uh, we're gonna be going after those acquisition targets hard and fast, uh, and hopefully close uh, as many as we can. And then as it pertains to our operations internally, we already have significant contracts from current clients for 2021, even into 2022. 
So we're going to continue to build that internal infrastructure, continue to build on those relationships. When you have partnerships with groups like Porsche and Orlin, multi-billion dollar groups, once trust is gained, you can then expand and you have bigger partnerships. You enter into new countries, new regions. So it's going to be a mushroom effect on our business where we're just going to continue to do what we're doing, deliver and grow and build our name and trust in the market. And then obviously, like I said, close some of those acquisition targets and consolidate Europe. That's the goal. Yes. Okay. So, I, so it's an interesting point you made. So once you have like a major brand uh, like Porsche, right, uh, then it's much easier to, to, to get the next guy on board. And, and and also that opens up doors to new markets, everything else. Once you know, people see that it adds you know tremendous credibility to the story. To the story. And, and, and that's why we want to work with the biggest brands in the world. So why, that, you know, when you work with Porsche, it opens, like you said, the door to Mercedes, the door to Kia, to all these big automotive companies. And they know you can deliver and you've executed and you have the proof to show it. And that, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. They have trust. You're going to come in and deliver. Yeah. I was going to say, what's that Roger Federer? I think, uh, what he he he? What is he? He's the he's he's a spokesman for which brands? He does I think the coffee the coffee thing I've seen. Yeah. He does coffee? He does uh, Rolex. He does Rolex. Uh, what brand? He's he's got to do like I think like twenty five different brands. He's doing and the same. And these things could all do esports. I mean, people who play esports they love coffee. It's actually funny you mentioned tennis because. They just came out with a game called Tennis Clash, and they had Serena Williams and and all these big names behind it. And they actually did a partnership with Gucci. I mean, we're talking about the tier one brands, right? Yeah, t this is tier one. The, you know, they're not hiding esports. The League of Legends tournament. Uh, they signed a sponsorship with Louis Vuitton. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, these are some things that not anybody could anticipate. I wouldn't think of those brands being in the. It's, it's very interesting. That's actually, that's like, uh, it's, I mean, they, I, they must see some opportunity. They, they, I guess that's yeah. graphic. Yeah, they want to capture the Gen Z market. And you're not going to capture that market on traditional uh, media or traditional TV channels. You have to dive in, get into the community. That's why it's very common in the esports world to use the word community because it is a community. And that's why it's important to have integrity, to deliver, and to actually execute on your plan. So if you host a tournament or if you have a big prize pool tournament, that you actually pay players, you deliver on time, they have a great experience. These are all very important factors. That's why execution delivery is at the highest priority for us. Okay. Uh, so a bunch of questions, M and A, how, I, I think one of the big, I guess the old questions come down to how are you going to pay for these acquisitions? Well, it, it depends on the actual acquisition. I mean, that's a little bit of a loaded question, depending on the size. Uh, if it's a larger size acquisition, we will consider going out and doing a private placement or raising some funds. If it's a smaller acquisition that we still have some cash available. Uh, within the company and we'll execute uh, with the cash that we have okay but essentially any any type of acquisition any type of m a is going to be accretive it's all going to be companies that are already profitable that are, that are you know essentially exactly essentially and themselves absolutely and we want to structure deals uh where it's more focused on shares rather than cash so there's a significant a portion in shares and a smaller portion in cash uh, because it just fits our structure better and it shows me that the groups that are coming on board are really engaged and they believe in the story okay a uh, couple questions about betting uh are you going to enter the betting space it's such an intriguing space i mean fans is doing a phenomenal job with it i know they've been on your show um a little side note, uh, I've worked with Flutter Entertainment, Full Tilt Poker, Poker Stars. I know the space very well. I know a lot of the people in that space. Uh, and we have a, 
a uh, very high profile director in our company who's uh, very well known in the gaming space. He's one of the top iGaming, so in the gambling space, it's called iGaming uh, lawyers uh, in all of Canada. So I think it's something we need to take a closer look at. You know, when the time's right, um, pot potential will we'll jump into it. Okay, okay. So it's uh, you know op very open ended. Uh, I, okay, so we got Hawaii is asking what U.S. company is is equivalent to ESC, or maybe I guess he's not even U.S. But like what what like kind of like mainstream company is equivalent uh, to. Uh, I'm thinking, is it maybe like what's what's the company that is it IMG? I think what what's the big talent agency that bought the UFC? I mean, you're kind of doing the similar model in a way, no? It, it's funny you mention IMG because we already work with them. Um, but I would say from a public listed standpoint, I would say EGLX is a good comparable. We do some different things, but uh, I think they've done phenomenally well. Uh, now they're starting to generate some significant revenues, so I think that'd be a good comparison. Uh, but quite frankly, on the public market side, um, not a lot of comparables there. Uh, and, and we really want to separate from those groups because we want to bring significant revenues uh, and profitability. And that's been a huge challenge for some of those groups. Uh, and we want to change that dialogue. So once again, delivering, bringing revenue and ultimately profitability. Uh, you know, it's I guess like in, ter in terms, but in terms of like the mainstream world outside of you know, East, you're, it's very similar to. I'm trying to think of the name. Who is the the um, the talent agency? You know, the Hollywood agency that bought uh, they bought the UFC. That's they, IMG. That's, it is that's IMG. IMG. Oh, they bought, no, they bought IMG. They bought IMG also. I think. Oh yeah, rec yeah, recent, yeah, recent, yeah, yeah, recently IMG got bought up. Okay. But previous previously IMG purchased. The UFC, okay, uh, and it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. They did actually recently just get bought out. Okay, so they, they I mean, they've, they've been buying like different events, every, so then, which is kind of like essentially you're almost doing it, it's sort of like you're because you're right, right now essentially ESC is, is you have multiple verticals in the esports yeah. world. So, so just to go back to that, so the company that bought IMG's Endeavor. So Endeavor purchased IMG for two point three billion dollars. Okay, okay, and, and, and then they also got I think UFC. It was a whole and, yeah in that in that in that package. Um, UFC would be in that bundle. Yeah, and other stuff. And, and I think the way they're looking at it is again, it's you have all these opportunities to leverage this sort of content, whether whether it's. Uh, uh, sponsorship, you know, because there's there's all sorts of new stuff you can do now. It's not just you know, it's it's not ads. It's sponsorships. It's also partnerships. It's all sorts of, you know, ma amazing stuff uh, that that you could do uh, in, in the space. Because there's a lot. Again, there's so many brands that you know they want to reach uh, this demographic, and esports kind of gives them that. You know, it serves it up on a platter. Um, let me see. I want to ask you. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, so let's, you know, in terms of the, the big picture, like what is, you know, maybe you can share your vision with our audience. So what, if, if everything works perfectly, what is ESC going to look like? Let's just say two years from now, 24 months from now, what is the company going to look like uh, if everything goes according to plan? Yeah, like I said from the beginning of the show, we want to build a billion dollar company, but based on fundamentals. So we're gonna to continue to do what we're doing. We have a proven model that's scalable. We're gonna to continue to pursue those acquisition targets and we're gonna build the global leader in esports infrastructure. Uh, and it, it's as simple as that. You just continue to execute and deliver and build. Okay, uh, let's see, we got, uh, we got a couple of questions. Okay, so Bo is asking, can you give us some companies that would be a good fit? I guess he's asking about potential acquisitions. Can you? I don't know if you want to share that. Maybe not. Yeah, I think we'll just keep that a little internal. But you know, like I said, we're pursuing those accretive acquisitions. Okay, so this guy's saying, yeah, for M and A, uh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. B asking, when will you be profitable? I believe I read somewhere you will prop in twenty. Will you be profitable twenty one? I think you know the goal is for 2021, uh, but it just depends on how we scale and and how fast we consolidate different regions because it obviously does affect 
uh, profitability, but we're going to be near that range in 2021 because we're going to be starting to pile on some revenue here. Okay. So yeah, so this is very interesting. So entertainment assets. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. I, I guess I would call these like you know, you know, uh, what is uh, you know UFC? Is that teams? All these like entertainment assets. I mean, these things can trade at massive, massive yeah. valuations, which are are not related to the actual revenue. So it's like the 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 the, the multiple the valuation can almost be whatever you want. Yeah, with within a reason. We're not gonna. But I mean, like, look well, at, the, no, it's. But that's exciting. That's a yeah, great comment. No, no. Sky, new sky potential. And you, you know, what is what did I'm trying to think of what are some of the teams? Uh what is the I'm trying like I so, I, the, so the, your yeah, your viewer brought on a great point. So let's use the example of Cloud9, for example. You know, I saw recently in Forbes, I'm sure it's updated now, but they had a couple hundred million dollar valuation, US dollars. And that's the exciting part. So with our gaming franchise kick. You know, you have the opportunity to build this team equivalent to Cloud9 or equivalent to like the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, these are opportunities that just do not come up. Uh, you know, in my opinion, anytime. I mean, this is a boom. Like, I mean, if I had the opportunity to buy the Dallas Cowboy for a few million bucks, I mean, I don't think we'd be on this show right now. Right. No, no. This is, this is, so this is the amazing thing. Like I think what, what's, what did the Steve Ballmer, he bought, was it the LA Clippers? Clippers. And then most oh, yeah. recently, um, uh, Cohen just bought the, the New Met. York Mets for, for multi-billion dollar purchase. But the, and these teams are not making money, are they? They're not making no. money. Ver, or very a lot, a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's, and if they are, it's really thin margins. And that's old school. I mean, ba I don't even, you know, like, I don't think, does anybody even watch baseball? I mean, I don't think like young people watch baseball. Uh, you know, it's like, I mean, actually, I, swear, I, I was in a, I was in a, a, a restaurant that had a baseball and to me it looks so old fashioned in those uniforms and everything. I was like, who's going to be, who's watching this stuff? And like, you know, esports basically I, like, you know, it's interesting kind of what you just said, actually all of a sudden it's, it's starting to kind of crystallize. Essentially, this is really like it's like getting in on the ground floor of. Yep. You just put, you add up, uh, you know, football, uh, uh, baseball, hockey, everything. All those all the old sports that is esports now. So th right now we have kind of like this blue sky, this wide open opportunity to to kind of you know create these massive you know these assets right now. And it, and it's it's first mover advantage. And you know we're in Europe, a monstrous market, 750 million plus people in that market. As I mentioned in my presentation, there's a three, a 580 plus million online presence in Europe, and we're right in the thick of it, right? And it's primed for consolidation. You want an opportunity? That's an opportunity. You know our online tournament platforms operating out of Southeast Asia. There's 170 million gamers in that market. Yeah, I mean, right. it's it's astronomical opportunity. And like you said, it's big blue sky. These opportunities do not come around. It's now. And I'm just glad to be in the position that we're in. We moved fast. We delivered. And now we're primed for growth. Okay. Let's uh, – okay, so we got a question. Alulu is asking, what are the future plans for Kick, which you just announced recently? Yeah. And just maybe just recap, what, is, what does Kick do in the, in the plans? Yeah, Kick is, Kick is super exciting. Uh, Kick is a professional esports team, uh, and they participate in the games League of Legends, Apex, and FIFA. Um, we have one of the top League of Legends teams in all of Europe, one of the best FIFA players in the world. Uh, and our Apex team just finished third in all of Europe in a recent tournament. So our future plans... We're actually in the middle of uh, upgrading our uh, website and really building out our, you know, infrastructure that pertains to the e-commerce site. And then we want to slowly start adding new teams, uh, acquiring better players, more competitive players, so we can enter into larger tournaments, and then hopefully enter those tournaments that have those multi-million-dollar prize pools. And that's the ultimate goal is to be competing head-to-head -head with the cloud nines of the world, the phase clans, all these big names. Uh, we want to be that next big global esports brand. 
But but the revenue, the, I mean, the revenue opportunities for for owning the, the team, it's not just the prize; it's really the brand, the sponsorship. Exactly, work. exactly. I think it could be more, much more money. Even I mean, the prize. so you have you have team sponsorships, just like you see in you know traditional sports where they have branding on the shoulders, on the chest of the jersey, uh, and we already have secured tier one sponsors there. And then there's advertising. So our players go on and they live stream. They're in commercials. You know, they're doing product placement. There's huge affiliate opportunities with groups like Razor and some other groups we've worked with in the past. It's the same as, you know, traditional sports. I mean, there's tremendous opportunities for advertising and sponsorship. Actually, much more because it's 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 like, you know, I, I call esports because all digital you don't have that. Yeah, there's no restrictions. There's no restrictions. All that old stuff with the stadium, you know, like, you know, all that crap that you need for physical sports. Uh, what the Zen he's asking, do players earn stock? Good question. Do they do you pay them stock? You give them options? How do you pay these guys? No, they do not. Uh, so they have salaries, uh, and they get a split of the earnings in tournaments. So, Mr. B is saying more people were playing Fortnite pre Super Bowl than people who watched. So oh, yeah, watch yep. the Super Bowl. Uh, do you own any Fortnite? So we're looking into Fortnite, uh, but that part of the business Pedro is really diving into. We're considering Fortnite and potentially CSGO as another game that we might enter. But currently, um, it's not a core focus. We really want to build out our current teams and build the infrastructure within. So build out the e-commerce platform, our new website. We just launched the new app, Kick App. Feel free to download that to follow our team. I actually encourage everybody to go follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. They got a great page, and you guys could keep up track of what we're doing. Okay, perfect. Uh, Conrad, we're we're all we're pretty much. At, I mean, we're, we're almost out of time here. I want to ask you uh, one last question here. Uh, which is always you know, our favorite question to ask uh, at the Wall Street Reporter. So, in your opinion, you know, what are the top three reasons why investors, you know, should want to own ESC stock today? I mean, esports is a mega trend. It's absolutely massive, multi-billion-dollar industry, like we mentioned, and we're on the ground floor. We're, we have that first mover advantage. And then as it pertains to our actual stock, once again, ground floor, we just listed a few months ago. You could get in early and be a part of the journey towards you know, creating this billion dollar company. And then three, at the end of the day, we're delivering. You wanna be a part of a group that's continuing to deliver, continuing to generate revenue and grow quarter over quarter. And that has partners like like I mentioned, Porsche, Amazon, all these big groups. I mean, I really believe in what we're doing. And I think we're the stock that you should be uh, looking at, tag, taking a closer look at. Okay. Uh, excellent. So, Conrad, um, on that note, um, you know, thank you for, for, for you know, sharing the story today. Uh, we got a lot of work. We got a lot of people on, on the stream. We got this. Is, we got YouTube. We got uh, Periscope, Twitch. See, look. You're, you're like a gamer. We're so great. Smart. Yeah, except I'm not getting tips. I'm not getting those. What do they, they get? The tips or something. <laughs> so so maybe, uh, yeah, maybe something we could uh, implement we later. Add on that. The road. We add that. I think they have super chat, right? The super chat yeah. like, on YouTube. Uh, that that's what we got to add. We got to add multiple revenue streams here, and then we'll have teams. always. So so kind of okay. So next week, I think we're gonna have you back. For follow up, we're gonna have a lot of. I think we're gonna have a lot of questions by then, because yeah. usually our first live stream, we do, you know, just people kind of get to know you a little bit, and then you know the audience builds, and then uh, you know, so uh, and then and we'll we'll, we'll uh, go we'll go from there. So again, Conrad, thank you, and thank you everybody for joining our live stream today, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, Jack. It was a pleasure to be on, and we're fired up to be on next week, and hopefully there'll be lots to talk about. And yeah, let's and you know I'd we we need the stock. We need the follow up when the stock gets to five dollars. That's the main thing. That's what the audience is is you know. Yeah, we're not, we're they're demanding now. They're they're very they're very high standards. We're working day and night, man. Monday you, through Sunday, three sixty five. 
<laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.